Is Cheryl frozen? Completely. Yeah. I uh -huh. lost you guys completely. Like, yeah. I had okay, you're back. <laughs> I was going to say, I think she's back. Oh, my gosh. But anyway, I just think it was kind of inherent to my just background, you know, that I knew that I shouldn't purchase those things. So, but, well, you guys, we're going to, I think you got everybody in, Kelly, so far. We're working on it they still. still coming in. We've got quite a few right now. Think well, I want to lean into asking um, one of my clients, um, Becky, to come on. And I, I asked her to just take a couple minutes to share with you guys about how fueling every three hours, how that's been a value to her, how she's used that as a tool for her. So, Becky, are you willing to come off and share? Uh, sure. Can Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, well, for me, the um, it, the fuelings every three hours took away all the pitfalls that I've had with previous things that I've tried to lose weight. And uh, it's been very beneficial for me because I, I only really have to plan one meal and that's the lean and green. Everything else is planned for me. So it's been very easy for me to fall into a ret routine with, um, I just grab my um, four fuelings that I'm going to have while I'm away from my home and plan in my head what my lean and green is going to be for when I get home. And then I have my last feeling of the day as kind of my treat. And so I start my day, I kind of have like a little journal. I don't know if people can see that, but it's just a, it's just a notebook that I've handwritten myself and it starts out with today is, and I put the day and the date and then what my why is, uh, for the, you know, doing this program. And, um, at first I thought, well, that's kind of stupid. The, the, my why is I don't want to be fat <laughs> anymore. So that, that, that was my first why, but, um, it's gotten deeper than that over time. So, um, and then I just start with recording the time of my first fueling. And then I just know three hours, you know, from that, I'm going to have my second and my third, the first several weeks I did set an alarm because it was new to me. And, um, I wanted to take the advice of others who had gone before me. I didn't want to try to reinvent the wheel. So I followed exactly what y'all told me to do, set an alarm. And I, I leaned into those alarms when they came on, I went, I got my feeling and back to work. So, um, but now it's just so routine for me that I know pretty much my first feeling is going to take place between seven and eight in the morning. And then I, I kind of know the timeline from there. So I haven't had to rely so much on the um, alarms, but the first several weeks I did because it was new. Um, but it has taken out all of the possible pitfalls that I've had previously. Um lack of planning, lack of time to grocery shop. And then maybe I would do great for three weeks, but I travel for work. So that fourth week when I'm traveling, I'm all off track and discouraged because I come back home and I get back on the scale and I'm like, well, everything that I did the three weeks prior to getting on an airplane and traveling for work is now debunked and I'm right back to, you know, square one. So this has been um, very exciting for me that it's very portable. It's very, it, it travels well. I can, I can incorporate it at any facet of my life, which is work, travel, lake, going to the lake, being out on the boat. It's just so easy. And the fact that it's removed all of the other choices that you would have to make if you were doing anything else where you have to plan breakfast, lunch, dinner, what snacks am I going to have? It was just overwhelming and too much. And now all the planning is done for me which is excellent because I, that's one less thing I have to worry about. I love that. Thank you so much, Becky. Cause what I hear you saying is it's created some structure for you. Absolutely. And structure when I we have stick to. Yes. So when we create that structure that we know what's going to happen from hour to hour or every three hours, it takes your, that stress off. It's one less thing in this busy, busy world we have that you have to be consumed about or concerned about. All right, guys, so we're jumping into element eight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my screen share up here. So give me a second.
All right. Can you guys see this? All right. Perfect. All right. So obviously we are going to work on element eight and we've just chatted a little bit about some of that just by reviewing last week and, and Becky sharing, but we're going to talk about how to fuel your body for that optimal health. And I think as we move through all of these um, Saturday mornings, it's important to remember that this isn't just, this doesn't have an end point. This is about changing your lifestyle. And what I love is Dr. Ray's quotes. And in this one, I really want you to focus on daily repetition of actions and behaviors. Those are key words here, daily, daily, daily. We want to do it over and over and over, rinse and repeat till it becomes like. automatic. It has to become automatic to you. So um, in element eight, I'm going to explain to you the headphones. importance of, if, if you, can you check and see if you're on uh, mute, everyone? Thank you. Um, so we're going to talk about, and I'm going to explain the importance of eating every three hours. These are our little focal points here. We're going to show you the necessary actions to take to attain a healthy weight. And I'm going to teach you how to create a fuel plan that works for you by using our habits of health clock as part of that process. All right. And who knows who's familiar with the 24 hour clock? Just put your hand up if you are. Okay. We got a few of you. All right. Great. All right. I love this slide. So really dial in here with me, guys. This is a really important slide. So this will um, help you kind of understand what, we're always to, what I'm always talking about, at least with my clients, about blood glucose and insulin. So notice that insulin line is a solid line. And then your blood glucose is the one that's making the biggest waves. All right. But notice, don't just look there, look at the green line, your baseline insulin, and then below that, the yellow line of the baseline glucose, all right? So this is when our body's in, in basically homeostasis, okay, those lines. That's, that's a good place to be, it's closer to those lines, right? <laughs> now, draw your attention to what is on this menu plan. Orange juice, bagel. Somebody would have thought, hey, a bagel's healthy, right? We've been told bagels are healthy. Well, they can't be, but not the 500 calorie bagel. Um, the burger, the soft drink, the candy bar, then that huge dinner meal that Lord knows what's in it, right? You're probably looking at 2,500 to 3,000, maybe more calories here, depending on what's in that menu. But show of hands of who grew up with three squares a day? Who grew up eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Maybe as you were a kid, you got a little afternoon snack at school. Well, I want you to think about, think back to times where you ever noticed that you had like a shaky or tired feeling or weakness um, after consuming a large calorie meal. Well, that's because of these big swings in insulin and blood glucose, all right? So I, I think it's important that you have that picture in your mind's eye that eating large, meals that are high in calories, very dense in calories, is not very good for our engine. And of course, unfortunately, this is where many of Americans live and breathe right now is in this particular area. And the consequence of that is that they're, it's leading them straight to disease and, and sickness over time. Um, so to me, I call this an array of craptastic food. But I want to talk to you really quick about a study that was done by the University of Toronto. Um, they're actually a pioneer in the low glycemic index eating category. So they conducted a study with two groups of people and both groups ate the same amount of food, the exact same food, same amount of calories, except group one ate three times a day and group two ate three hours, every three hours throughout that day. And what I found really interesting, um, and as Dr. A shared with us in his book, is that group one lost more weight, and that was because their blood sugars didn't continually dip and spike like you see here. Um, and then group two also reduced their, 
cravings, like their sweet cravings and, and everything went down. And the belief through the, because you have to theorize, have a theory here is that the key is that the, in addition to regulating your blood sugar and the, that insulin plays this huge role in fat metabolism, in the inflammation process. And it also plays a really huge role in the progression toward metabolic syndrome. So keeping those things in mind, when your body produces less insulin, you're much less likely to convert dietary calories into body fat. And then over time, because we're not producing as much insulin, um, our, our bodies actually begin to work differently. Um, we stop becoming that fat producing machine um, that we have become by eating this, these types of foods in our diet. So I think this is a, a very important slide. And if you haven't screenshotted it yet, or you haven't gone and found it in your Habits of Health book, you should because it's, it's huge. And we're gonna have another slide coming up here in a second, and you're gonna see the comparison to them. So as I just said, our modern diet, our modern day life has, is leading us to all these high dense, poor nutrient foods full of sugar and salt and fats. Um, and then they heighten that blood sugar and they increase insulin. And then we're always in this food cycle, this hunger cycle. So here's the other slide. So screenshot that too. This is where we want to be. This is where those core principles of our, our habits of health come into play. So by maintaining that blood sugar, we're, and we do that in our insulin levels through fuel control, portion control, and then that fueling of every three hours. So look here, we are always going to have some rise in insulin and blood glucose, I can say it, glucose, um, when we eat. That's normal part of how the body responds. But if you think back to the chart we just looked at, I liken it to pulling up in your car to a traffic light, putting your car in park and romping on the gas pedal. Is that good for your car's engine? Absolutely not. So when we eat, poorly based foods, right? Not all food is bad, but when we eat foods in those higher glycemic index, when we're overeating, those types of things, it's just like romping on the engine, your body's engine. You're asking your, your pancreas, your liver, everything to just rev up really, really high. So think of it as that racing you know, of a car engine. But if you eat every three hours and you eat macro balance, scientifically based fuelings like we have with um, Optavia. This is what happens. You're just, your engine's just kind of purring along. You have this nice steady state of energy. We don't have those big swings in glucose and blood sugars. And we get to stay what I call in the pocket. And we're no longer revving our, our body's engine. So very important to to, to consider these things and think about these things and have a, a picture in your mind's eye of the type of damage that we could be doing to our engine, right? When we're eating off of a low glycemic index diet or we're trying to cram these big heavy meals in. So knowing that eating every three hours is really part of our nature gatherer concept you know from that ten thousand year old body that's kind of normal for us to want to do that so it's a natural place for us to be and then we pair that with that low glycemic um, macro balanced fuelings that we have and that insulin pump then is turned off and it's keeping our energy levels nice and stable and it helps us avoid those blood glucose swings and it decreases our engine's workload so it's stabilizing that workload. Um, a little sidebar to that as a bonus is we're also going to reduce those levels of free radicals. And if you're not familiar with free radicals, but I'm not going to go into that in depth, but free radicals cause inflammation and disease. 
So we want to keep those free radicals normalized as well. Also, by using our fuelings and e eating every three hours, we avoid the tendency to want to overeat, which then overfills our digestive tract. And that overeating causes cravings. And I don't know about some of you, but you may have noticed by overeating, your digest digestive tract can slow down significantly and it can cause problems on the other end. No pun intended, but maybe a little pun intended. Let's see what else we have here. Let's go to this mindset piece. It is about your mindset. We have to choose that this works for us because it does work for you. Many of you are already experiencing that. You've seen your weight loss. You may have been back to your doctor and you've seen your blood glucose levels change, your blood work. Your doctor's probably like, oh my gosh, what are you doing, right? So eating like this for the rest of our lives is super important to our longevity and reaching that optimal health that we all truly, truly wish to desire. Um, but I want to tell you about another study. I, I love studies, so I'm kind of a geek about that sort of stuff. So there's a study done at Harvard University by Dr. David Ludwig. He's like known as the obesity warrior, if you will. And he says, and I'm going to read his quote here, the fat cells in a high insulin state are hoarding energy and, in effect, creating a one-way turnstile where insulin is ushering calories into the fat cells, but resisting the passage back out. And I believe that kind of translates over into perhaps some metabolic syndrome issues as well. But consequently, the body runs low on accessible energy, generally within a few hours of one of those high calorie eating moments. And then when the brain senses a lack of availability of energy, it then sends out a signal or a call for help that sets up this cycle of constant hunger. So not only do we rev our engine, but now we're actually adding more food into our dietary plan and there are gonna be calories that our body doesn't necessarily need, nor can it process and handle. So let's go to our 24 hour clock now. So this is our 24 hour clock. Some of you may have seen it or not. You know, there's a 24 hour clock schedule. I'm familiar with this as a, a retired soldier, but our system is 24 hours, seven days a week, 52 weeks out of the year type of a system. And it's intended to help you build a, your own new rhythm and create some that homeostasis over time. Um, and what that means is that it's, it's important that, well, homeostasis for you would be, um, it integrates around what matters most to you. And I love this because if you have someone who works shift, different kind of a schedule, all you have to do is adjust the dial and highlight the areas where you might be sleeping or and awake. And we're gonna talk about that here in the next slide. So once again, look at how we've popped in now where the fuelings go. So look at 22. 22 is that hour where Dr. A encourages us to turn off all the blue light, to start wrapping things up for the night and slowing things down. 20 <laughs> Sorry. 23 to 6 is when we're sleeping. Thank you. This is the time we're supposed to be getting that enjoyable, restful sleep. 7 a.m. we're waking and we're starting that fueling plan. So we're gonna eat within that first hour and then we're gonna set that alarm for every two and a half, two to three hours and do our fueling. So you can take this and you can adjust this so that it meets your needs based off of your daily routines and schedules. And I absolutely love the fact that when I leave my house, I don't know about you, but I leave with this bag and I have had this bag. This is an old beater 31 bag. Heck, the insulation in it is about gone. A friend of mine gave it to me. It's got my little name embroidered on it, so I can't get rid of it. 
but I have a little cooler bag thing. I pop it in here. I load. I always have two fuelings and two snacks. You never know if you're going to run into a friend who might need something, right? Okay, I'm just saying. And my drinks. Always two bottles of water, and then I might have a bubbly water in there as well. But this goes with me wherever I go. I don't care if I know I'm just going to be gone for two hours. I always have it with me as that backup and just in case something happens. So that's just a little tip from me to you. But if you, as Vanessa taught us last Saturday, we have to plan to succeed daily. We have to prepare for each day so that we set ourselves up for success. And when we use our clock and we schedule things and we know in our mind's eye what we're doing and how we're going to do it, we create more success for ourselves versus I'll just wing it. Now, how can we bring all this together? We have to have this action step. So a couple of Saturdays ago, I talked about the habit loop. Well, here we're also using the habit loop. We, you can use our, our um, Habits of Health app as a reminder. And you see we have a little screenshot of that here. If you're not familiar with it, please lean into your coach and ask some more questions about that. But our action loop is at Q, the alarm, the routine. Again, it's either going to be hydrate, fuel, and move. That's what I like to put in my routine. Hydrate, fuel, and move for sure. And then that instant reward is we're satisfied, we're full, we have that personal fulfillment because we got up and we did something of value for our body to strengthen our body, whether it's our heart and lungs or our musculature. And then that long-term investment, this is really the key. Long-term investment because we have weight loss, we have improved health, we're, we're disease-free and something that we just can't describe is that kind of personal freedom it's so hard to put into words but the fact that you don't have that weight on your shoulders any longer that you're feeling better but you see it you in the faces of other people i see it in the faces of all of you that you're you're happy you're glow you're glowing up you know you hear that turn glow up I see that in my clients all the time and it's so rewarding for me as a coach, but oh my gosh, I can just imagine and I know from the smiles on people's faces how rewarding it is to you as an individual. So um, when you've made that fundamental choice to take control of your health and your life, you get the glow up and I absolutely love that. So Q, routine, instant reward, long-term investment. So I challenge you right now just to take a moment. And if you want to pop, pop up, pop your hand up and talk, I'm going to take us off a of share. But we are going to talk about real quick um, what results. Maybe give me an idea of what kind of results some of you are going to uh, or actions you're going to take from the result of going over this element element eight who would like to go hands all right there we go sharon hi there good morning um i need for myself i need to definitely set my clock and i have a wonderful coach i just have to give her some kudos noelle i love you but um setting my clock. So that's what I'm getting from this. So I, I was on tracks. Well, I've got some of the, it, you can't see it. it well, maybe it's, I, can see it a little I have bit. the background dubbed out, but anyway, I just set my clock. I was writing some good notes in my book as we were going and making it a routine is, is the thing where I'm really struggling right now. I need to really make it a routine. So, um, it takes me no time at all to get off of routine. So setting that clock. Good, good. And you do have a great coach in Noelle. She's been doing this a while. She knows her stuff. So um, yes. creating that structure, Sharon, huge. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, um, I just want to say I'm diabetic. 
and I have an insulin sensor, you know, for free. Uh, it's the free Libra link. But the reason why I'm, I'm saying this is I get evidence of everything you talked about this morning 25 times a day when I take my reading because everything I put in my mouth, it shows good or bad. And I can tell you there is nothing like the fuelings that is so, um, no matter where my sugar is, if I eat a fueling, it's not going to, my sugar is, or glucose reading, it's not going to go up very high. And it's just unbelievable that I see the evidence of what you're talking about. Now, the important thing is you don't have to be diabetic. But you may not see it because you don't have a sensor like I do, but you are getting the benefit of, of you know, being in homeostasis, like you call it. It's unbelievable. And nothing has worked as well as Octavia for my diabetes. I just wanted to share that. That, that is amazing. And, and that is proof is in the pudding right there. Thank you, Bob, for sharing that, because that's very powerful coming from someone with a diabetic condition. We really appreciate that. I see Kimberly's got her hand up. Kimberly? Good morning, everybody. I want to shout out to Phyllis. She's been an amazing coach and friend for a very long time. But what I wanted to say, one of the big takeaways, I just, this was my first time hopping on on a Saturday morning, but one of the things I want to thank you for sharing was the takeaway with the bag. Um, one of the pitfalls I've run into is leaving the house and I think I'm gonna be gone for a short period of time and being caught out without any fuelings or anything, being prepared. And so, you know, setting myself up for success, you know, I think is going to be a big, a big help for me. So I've been caught out where I've been um, not, I've been tempted and then I just didn't have anything with me. So I didn't eat anything for long periods of time. So that's a, a huge pointer. And I appreciate that. Thanks for the heads up. And I'm going to look for a little bag like that to, when we go garage selling today, or I'll go to TJ Maxx, but I really appreciate that, um, pointer on that. I have a big one that I take with me all during the work week, but I'm going to look for a small one that I can just either grab and go during, you know, during this short uh, visits out. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, that. that is really, that's really important, Kimberly. And I will tell you that um, when, just a little tip for me to you folks, um, if you find that you've gone over your three hours and you're heading into that fourth hour and you're like, well, I might as well skip, don't. That You need to go ahead and fuel, okay? Don't skip your fuelings, just get it in there because you can have a fueling as often as, depending on situations, talk to your coach, of course, in an hour and a half later, okay? But you can have it as soon as two hours. There are some conditions where we can have it as soon as an hour and a half. But um, yeah, gold right there, it stays by the door. So when I walk by my door, it's like, oh, I gotta fill my bag, I'm not leaving without it. Um, I see, um, so thank you for sharing, Kimberly. We greatly appreciate that. Tammy, I see your hand up. Hi, Tammy, how are you feeling? Well, so I'm, you know, I'm struggling this week, actually. I've had a lot of, um, you know, pain this week. I'm waiting for surgery. Surgery's Tuesday, hallelujah. So, I and I know the recovery from the surgery is going to be rough from what I'm understanding. So I'm kind of settling in and gearing up for a rough few weeks. But you know what? One day at a time, we're going to do it. So um, that's that's kind of what I'm trying okay. to do one day at a time. So my takeaway and I, I love the the bag I do that you know I teach so I have my insulated lunch bag and I have my four fuelings a snack and four waters that I take you know every day there I've not been good about the little short trips like you talked about though I think that's a great idea I kind of you know that's a good thing to do I haven't even really thought about if I'm out for just you know a couple hours but anyway but the big takeaway something that you said just hit home with me when you you mentioned about taking control of like our own you know doing something of value for my body and 
and they're taking control because one of the things that I've struggled with, not just with food, but my whole existence, I think, um, is taking control of my own life because, and not placing blame, but just kind of, this was the way I grew up. My dad um, was a Marine in World War II, if that gives you any indication. So he was one of those that always had his thumb on us and he controlled everything that we did. And I don't know that I ever was allowed to make decisions for myself um, because it was just, you know, even into adulthood, he seemed to have a huge impact on everything that I did. And so I got lazy about my own life just because it was, I had always had someone else telling me what to do or telling me, and, and it, and it's not his fault. It was just the dynamic. I, I got lazy and allowed situations and people or whatever to influence me that I don't know for a long time if I ever had any real, if I ever took control, I had the control. I just didn't know it. And the idea now of taking control of my own body and my own health is huge for me. And it's, you know, I'm 57 years old. So it's a little, it's a long time coming, but better late than never. Um, that, that was my huge takeaway from that is that is something that I'm really working on. And this is helping with that is the taking control of my own health. Um, and, and I, I think to- you've already made that first step, Tammy, you are doing that. You have a great coach in Vanessa. You're doing that. You're getting on these Saturday mornings, which are huge. Um, and you're sharing and you're exploring those different parts of your person. And right. um, that's those are those first steps, right? My right. dad always used to say that if you don't take the first step, what do you know what the next step is unless you take a step, right? And you're doing that. And that bravo for you. That's really very brave. And it takes bravery to take control. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Well, you guys, I see we're a little bit over. Um, so I hope I didn't miss anybody this morning, but I know everybody's got busy week. Oh, I see Gretchen's hand up. I see Zoom user. Do we have time? Do you all want to stay on and finish so we can hear from some other people? Should we do that, Kelly? That sounds good. I'd also like to address the question in the chat I saw about the Habits of Health app. And that Habits of Health app was created as a digital resource for our Habits of Health transformational system. Um, But however, since the launch of the recent Optavia app, Optavia is really focusing on consolidating everything for us to put everything in one place. So if you don't have the Optavia app, you will find all of the information. They're they're making a adjustments to that and and building on that app every day. So don't feel like it's completely going away because we're just going to transition to the Optavia app where you're going to have everything included there. So that will sunset on May 31st. um, And as of June 1st, just be sure to go ahead and and download that Optavia app so that you have that available for you. You're going to find recipes and um, just links to client community and things like that there. But that is available and it's not going away. Well, I see that Gretchen took her hand down and iPhone took their hand down. So um, let's just go ahead. We're going to, as we wrap up today uh, and we go into this Memorial Day weekend, I'd uh, like to leave you with um, this little thought. And that is to uh, please remember that um, our flag doesn't fly because the wind moves it. It flies because with the last breath of each soldier who died protected them. So God bless America. And thank Have you for your service. You're welcome. To everyone out there that served. Thank you. Yes. But to those who have fallen, and let's make sure that we remember what the holiday is about. It's not about food and drink. It's about honoring those that have come before and protected our freedom. So Thank you guys for being here today. Thank you, Kelly, so much for inviting me to lead Element 8. And I look forward to seeing everybody next Saturday. Thanks, Sharon. Great job. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for your service.